So good morning, everyone. Uh, so my uh, topic is rotablation case-based discussions. So of late, we have uh, been seeing uh, calcium, recognizing calcium, kind of calcium, uh, but there inside the coronary artery and uh, dealing with that. And we are enhancing and, uh, you know, uh, bettering our performance. So uh, this was a case when I was doing an acute uh, anterior MI STEMI and nothing was going in after 1.5 millimeter balloon. And uh, to our surprise, this patient had a very severely calcified lesion and I had to take root ablation in uh, acute uh, anterior MI. So whichever case you are doing, you can't avoid these kind of, uh, you know, gadgets. And uh, to be familiar with these gadgets, you have to uh, see uh, cases, do cases, and then perform cases and finally uh, you can give outcome like this. So this patient uh, uh, was okay in uh, 24 hours, we discharged the patient. So let's uh, go around the algorithm of calcium, uh, how we detect it. So we have got scoring algorithms now, OCT based and IVAS based. And what we see is the arc of the calcium, the length of the calcium, the thickness of the calcium and the vessel size which we see in IVAS. Uh, so, and we get a calcium score and we decide our strategies, but this is also very important. Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, the calcium, uh, distribution, uh, patterns are. So this is, uh, basically, a, a very superficial calcium and concentric calcium. This is very well treated by root ablation. This calcium, the second one is, uh, deep calcium, although concentric. So the cal this rotaver is not going to touch this calcium. So no way you can perform rota in these cases. IVL is the you know method of choice. Similarly, when there is eccentric calcium, which is superficial, beta, you know, calcium calcific nodule, it's well treated with rotablation, provided your wire is biased towards the calcium. So we have a, got a misconception that rotablation creates a walk inside. We really scared that rotablation, this rotating mechanism is going to rupture the artery, you know, disturb the artery, destroy the vessel, the intima and everything. But it is not true. You see here, the left side, there is a uh, artery which has been given angioplasty with a balloon. And you can appreciate here the number of dissections in the artery. And right side, it was after a rota run. So rota gives you a clean artery. Rota ablates and cuts very precisely and the artery which you uh, have uh, after a rota run is very clean, unlike your angioplasty balloon. So this fear is totally unfounded and totally out of proportion. We shouldn't be fearing rotablation if you know the basics and how to perform it. It's just, it works just like an electric razor. You see, when we cut our, uh, when we shave, it cuts our hair, but doesn't cut our, uh, you know, the skin. And that is how rota works. When it encounters the elastic tissue, it doesn't, you know, cut it. With, encounters an inelastic tissue, it cuts through. And, and, and that is why it cuts the calcium, it cuts the fibrotic plaque, but seldom cuts the, you know, you know, intima. So let's uh, get ourselves familiar with rotablation system. So rotablation, uh, now we have got Rotapro. This is the, you know, the gold standard, not gold standard, the original Rotalink, which we have been using for last seven, eight years. So Rota, they all, they both have a console and an advancer and a paddle. So the paddle is not there in Rota, you know, Rota Pro. They, uh, on the advancer, there is a knob, which you uh, activate, then the rotablation starts. And again, you push it, then a rotablation stops. So everything is con in, under, under your control in Rota, Rota Pro in your hands. But in Rota Link system, this a paddle is there and the console is there and an advancer. We'll go through in detail. And this bird, the burring motion, the, the increased speed is faci facilitates the advancement burr. So just like opening a champagne, your fingers doesn't get hurt. It's what easy. Just do it and it goes off. So the increase, the speed, the burr usually advances. You don't have to push it uh, through the tissues. And the plaque which you, the particles which you get after, uh, you know, the rota burr, the rota runs, these are about less than five microns. So they don't clog the vessel usually. So you don't get a no flow situation. You can get a slow flow situation, very rarely no flow. And all these pass through the capillaries and, and they are uh, taken care by the reticular endothelial system, you know, uh, afterwards. So nothing is retained there in the microcirculation after some time. That is the basic. And this is a console. There is a dynac light and a foot pedal. 
and there is an air tank is there and there is a compressed air or nitrogen you can keep in the air tank i will go through uh, uh, all this in detail uh, because it's it's important to know the hardware in cardiology intervention cardiology 80% job is done if you know the hardware what french size what is you know uh, what's the lumen uh, there and what kind of gadgets you are using so this rotalink console has got a, a you know a tachometer where the rotational speed is displayed there is a event timer there is there are connections through which you uh, connect with your saline and the uh, advancer then, then there is a turbine pressure knob where through which you can control the pressure and there is a power switch and a power lamp and this is the air tank the pressure in the air tank should be something around 500 psi not 500 to 700 psi but in the console it should be around 90 to 100 psi it's not more than that and that is controlled by the knobs which are there in the console system and uh, dynamic glide you can activate by just pushing this the side button which is which is silver in color smaller knob you press it and then it it lightens up and it shows that now it is dyna glide mode now you can switch the paddle and the dyna glide it will move in a dyna glide fashion dyna glide means the rotational speeds is not something like 150 170 it's just half of that 70 to 90 so it doesn't injure the vessel you can just take out the wire after activating the dyna glide mode and switching the paddle so this is how it works and uh, uh, sometimes some of the operators you must have seen dyna glide mode they activate to advance the wire sometimes wire comes in little you have parked the wire in the distal led or distal rca you've activated the foot switch now we are doing a rotor and now you see the wire has little come come inside the mid, mid led so if you want to park the vessel some of the operators they bring the switch on the dyna glide mode and then activate the uh, you know rotor and pass the wire in so that is not a great idea Although very uh, seasoned operators like Dr. Samim Sarma has shown many times, but the company uh, discourages uh, about doing these things. So it's rotor dyna glide mode is always to withdraw the wire, to, you know, the, uh, the exchange the wire. And then we have got uh, an advancer. Advancer has uh, got multiple, uh, you know, knobs. So this is basically the advancer knob. Uh, uh, you uh, in Rota Pro, you press it and go forward. In Rota Link, the switch pedal works and you. Uh, go forward and backwards with this knob and then there is a, a wire brake system there is a you know uh, uh, you have uh, multiple connect connectors and then there is a, a drive shaft through which uh, the boat rota bar is you know attached here one of the most important component which, which one should know is rota wire so rota wire is unlike point, point 0.014 what we uh, generally has got uh, generally has the basically the normal thickness of the wire which we use this is 0 0.09 and it tapers down to 0 0.0077 then uh, 0 0.005 in the distal then again it uh, last portion is 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.014 so that is why if you take your rotor bar towards the spring coil it is going to snap it off so you have to leave the opaque part of the uh, rotor wire while you are, uh, you know, doing a rotor ablation. So there's nothing is more opaque, little uh, distal segment of 30 centimeter, 30 millimeter is opaque, opaque. So you don't have to go, uh, your rotor bar should not be approaching this area. It should be proximal to that area. And then the rotor drive extra support has got uniform 0 0.009, uh, you know, thickness till uh, five centimeter. And beyond that, it tapers down 0 0.005. So there is no transition from 0 0.009 uh, 2.0077, 2.005. So this directly taps to 0 0.5, 0.05. This is the Rota Pro, and this gives you gives us a uh, basically this uh, halo uh, triangle, yellow triangle, gives us an idea that 5,000 rotations have dropped, and more th this solid uh, triangle gives you an idea that 10,000 rotations have dropped. So this is a very visually uh, very very attractive kind of thing which is right in front front of you and you can uh, do the procedure seeing that and the console is also very high tech they have made and and it's really good experience to use rota pro so i will take you all through this can we have the uh, volume can we have the volume yeah, of this video you can see here the trick and uh, we will just check how much pressure it is uh, you know, generating the, this is the gas pressure is there in the console or not so uh, uh, there is a test called draw test which we do and which we are going to do first we see draw means drip you see here there is a drip coming up so there is a constant flush is going on and this is not the uh, 
root of flush, we have given gilgem and heparin and nitrate. And uh, now we will uh, check the draw means drip, then advancement, and then rotation, and then wire. So these four, four things we need to check. And here, see here, this is root of plus, it's not a root of root. And uh, it, it, this is unlocked and this is locked. So uh, from here, and once it is unlocked, locked, it, this moves like this. So once we activate and the uh, rotor will show up there. So there, if, why is the, why is the, you know, brake is there, tightened. It's important that your brake uh, is there. And then I see here, now there will be rotation to happen. And now I see here, there will be a good movement. Now you have to fix it two okay. centimeter just uh, so, you know uh, towards the uh, you know rota bar, and then you have to go inside. So the draw test has to perform beforehand. Once you without before going in, everything is set up, and then you need to do a draw test. You see the drip yourself. That's a line which should be at least two hundred millimeter Hg pressure should be there in the pressure bag, so, so that the drip is continuous. And then it should be advancing freely. It should, there should be no resistance and it's rotating. You can see the rotational speed there. Here you see here. So once we are testing it, how much the speed we are having. So this is 132,000. Uh, so we have to increase the speed through this dial. Okay. And then now I can appreciate here it's uh, 157. After this preparation, we go in. So without this, you are going in, rushing through the procedure. You are going to... Uh, and not going to do justice to the uh, you know uh, the, the, the uh, uh, therapy so uh, here you see a very calcified led and we are going uh, doing rota and you can appreciate the uh, lesion is not getting crossed here everything was getting stuck here so it is not going in going in so you don't we don't have to rush it we have to grow uh, the second run uh, which uh, we started and then fi fi finally we made through uh, so this is the second run you can appreciate the rota wire passed, rota were passed, and then there was a follow, uh, followed by polishing run, and then finally we could do, and this was the, you know, the lesion, uh, the final stenting. Mm -hmm. So this is how uh, 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 rota ablation is done. So what are important uh, potential complications? How uh, uh, we can avoid that? Recommended maximum drop is five thousand. If you see more than five thousand. It can generate excess heat. It can cause a spasm. It can cause increased particle burden. System will stall at 15,000 drop. So be careful if the sound of the pitch of the, uh, you know, sound uh, gets altered or you see directly that the, there is a drop in more than 5,000, you have to come back and stop and always do a slow, smooth, short pecking moment rather than forcing the rotor uh, down the lesion is going to get stuck. So, Everyone who has done more than 20, 30 rotablation, they have got one or two stuck bars. So it is not un uncommon, but you can avoid after 20, 30, if you do next 50, the rota stuck bar be chances will be less because then we knew the, we know the nuances. So we don't have to rush through the lesion. If it is not going in, just, just hitting the uh, lesion coming down, hitting the lesion and coming, retracting down. And this is how one uh, uh, you will go and cross. Do not over tighten the wide adapter, avoid daughtering, never stop or start in the lesion or beyond the lesion. You have to stop the uh, rotablation once you are proximal to the lesion. Otherwise, there will be a chance of a stuck bar and never adjust RPMs during ablation. So you can't adjust. You see 180, you don't want to come down 140 while doing a, a, a you know, a, 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 putting the foot switch on. So these are all uh, small uh, nuances and uh, tips. You can get three feedbacks. One is tactile. I, I hope I have time, sir. Yeah. So uh, we get three kinds of feedbacks. One is tactile. So uh, we can get an excessive load on bar or bar advance too rapidly. Then uh, we can assume that there's some problem has happened or can happen. Visual, you can see there uh, how the rota is moving and auditory pitch changes. So rota pro, you can see everything in front of your eyes. In rota link, you have to see in the console. So you depend more on pitch sound than the uh, uh, visual things. And final polishing run is very important. You should stop when there is no RPM drop, no tactile resistance, good flow through the lesion site and beyond. So, uh, and with this, I will go through some of the cases which uh, we have done, uh, which, will, which will be of interest. So this is a case, you see the calcified lesion. 
can you can you even comment which modality of uh, calcium modification tool can work here i don't think with, besides ruta anything can fit here hugely calcified led lesion right from the ostium to the mid led so you can't uh, they, they, you feel scared in negotiating this vessel even with wire rather than going with a cutting bullet something like that so nothing else but ruta works here you see uh, after the initial uh, uh, run uh, which we cost through there was a polishing run and then uh, finally uh, it was dilated with nc balloons and this was a uh, stented and we got through this result so this was the final result so and this was not at all a case of bypass surgery can you see here the distal led there will be a huge endarterectomy and then again there will be a you can't guarantee the treatment you know the uh, outcome sometimes you can get a uh, uh, lesion like this you do a rota again you do a cutting balloon you deploy a stent but if even after that after cutting balloon rota your results are inadequate and you can you have to go to with ivl so rota tripsy is uh, you know needed in many cases and it depends on what kind of lesions we are treating with this is my final case you can appreciate here uh, lesion is calcified but is not very you know diffuse or kind of uh, not much angulation but there is there was only one angulation and then finally we got a rota bar proximal to lesion so this is this is why it is important we have to bar the proximal lesion also where there is a calcium and 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 then the rota bar was stuck we uh, recrossed the led and then we dilated the balloon and then finally the rota bar was free and we could do the procedure so thank you so much for the patient hearing i hope there will be a few questions thank you